Monday, March 11th for the Town of Bethel Select Board. And I will accept nominations, I will accept nominations for, for Oh, you made the wrong person, Teresa. I did. Oh, I muted the select board. Okay, Chris, Denise, you second? Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Sounds like it's Chris for another year. All right. Owen, can you hear us? He's the only person online. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can yeah, hear you. Okay. Hear you. All right, good. We were just playing with the audio, so I wanted to make sure. Awesome. Thank you. All right. So uh, first on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Do we have anything that needs to be amended, or are we good to approve as written? We're good to approve. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So we'll try to talk you through. <clears throat> yeah. So the first couple of meetings is usually just annual a point uh you know there's you know there's probably 20 things that we appoint people to um we try to do it over two or three meetings um and then anything what we'll try to do is anything that's ongoing i'll try to catch you up with what it might be or if there's any um, formality type pieces we'll just i'll slow the meeting down so that you can understand it more rather than us just like you know because because a lot of things go be in front of the board a lot of times they're just simple formality things that we just approve and move on um like a lot of these things that are yeah, coming exactly. up. so we'll just go through and explain them a little better for you so you can get the understanding <laughs> of that um uh, the, the first thing on the agenda is, is <clears throat> there are times that the agenda could be outdated from the time it got printed something might come up now if we want to add something to the agenda <clears throat> it won't be actionable so like because we haven't warned it, so we wouldn't take action on it. Like, if you wanted to bring something up, put it on the agenda, we could do that, but not necessarily take action on it. Yeah. Um, not to say that you couldn't take action, yeah, we've but we done typically it don't because it, it's not fair if we haven't warned it to somebody to say, you know, somebody wanted to um, um, talk mm -hmm. about it. So, yeah, it depends if we're acting like a liquor license or something <clears throat> like that. Well, you know, obviously. Yeah. And, 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 and you know, feel free. I mean, it doesn't necessarily, mm -hmm. if you had something, doesn't necessarily have to go down as an agenda item. You can always do it under public comment or you can do it under any other business coming for the board, so. All right. Um, and so we will open up to public comment. The um, So on the public comment end of things, we um, some boards will stick right to an exact, like you got two minutes to speak be, because usually we have lack of individuals. We usually say three to five minutes, and if it's going well, if we need to give more time, we will type deal. But um, definitely on whatever the item is, we'll let everybody speak before someone gets a second turn. So, uh, so we'll go public comment. Um, I only see Owen out on the web. Unless he has anything, we will just move in person, which nobody. So, oh, he's saying something. Hey, Owen. Go ahead, hey, y'all. Hey, well, I'm getting an echo, but that's okay. Um, I just wanted to welcome the two new select board members. And um, I I guess I'm just saying that on behalf of the Equity and Inclusion Committee. And um, we're here to be a resource to you all. We have a couple of events that um, happen throughout the year. Um, and yeah, just wanted to say welcome. I'm excited to work together. And Paul just couldn't get enough of us. Uh, Back for round two. Yeah, Adam said he was fine. You were good? It's yeah. the money. It's all about the money. It's all about the money? It's all about the money. <laughs> well, I'll tell you. It didn't It'll throw your yeah. taxes off at the end of the year, <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you. <laughs> I got to pay this year. It must be that. Must yeah. be. Put you over the edge. Uh, so we have some of the annual um, designees. So the... Um, First one is the to make the Herald the paper of record. I think we've, at least since I've been here, it's always been the, the Herald. Yep. Um, I'm assuming that we will stick with that. So just need a motion to designate. Can, can we, did, didn't we last year lump 
a bunch of them together. You did. I listed them all out just because. I, 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 well, I think you. I have copied to. and pasted from the last year. I'm not gonna lie, from the last year, so I remembered what they all were. I, I read but you can. a couple times, and I don't see anything there. Well, but on the first eight, you could do the first two, but you're gonna have to make. But the board member to sign is somebody. But you could do the first two as come. Find the first yeah, two. I don't, we'll spend too much time talking about it. But yeah. If you Go could, ahead. we could be a, an hour one at a time <laughs> talking about it. We could try the post office again. I know we have we have a new postmistress mm -hmm. person, and maybe we could use the post office. That's a good place. As a backup. As a well, as a backup or as one of the actual ones, because I think there's more taxpayers going into the post office than there are. Some of the uh, so the libraries the post offices. Just, uh, uh, well, just uh, take four. See. Is that a big deal? Or? We could do that. We have to get their permission. Usually on until June. No. Right, but three is only. What do you mean? Three is that's the minimum. Yep. Yeah. Right. We could have ten, but right. we have to have three. Well, yeah. You could say. Yeah. You could add post office just with a caveat that if they yeah, if they allow us. Sure yeah. Okay. Well, let's put food shelves up there all the time. They don't ever complain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, let's just buzz through these quickly. So, <clears throat> any any issues with having the Herald be the newspaper of record? Yes. If not, mm -hmm. just need a motion to so designate. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And then <clears throat> sounds like we'd like to add on the next one the post mm -hmm. office to be the fourth, assuming that they give us permission to mm -hmm. post there. Does that sound fair? Yes. Yeah. Okay, moved by Dave. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, right. <clears throat> Authorize the board member to sign the AP and payroll. So on that is like what we had just signed the packets there. Yeah. So we usually have somebody that goes in. It's Paul did Denise. it years ago. Denise's been doing it that go in ahead of time, look yeah. through all of it. So all we do is just sign it. Yeah, and it's nice too because yeah, well, Paul was good at it. He trained Denise well. So she sits there and, and goes through every single time card, looks at the cover sheet. She goes through every single invoice and bill. And so, um, you know, like I said, Paul trained her well. He was, so I don't know. You still want to do it, Denise? Sure. Unless Paul wants his old job back. <laughs> doing fine. <laughs> so we'll just... Appoint uh, Denise. Appoint back Denise. Up, so back up one more. so right. just need a motion to appoint Denise as the board so member we'll, to sign for us. Okay. Hey, all in favor? Aye. All right. All right. I will say if if Denise can't make it or something, we then we call one of you, yeah. somebody else, and say, hey, can you swing by and do this? So yeah. I mean, Dave's done it a couple times, and you know, I think everybody's done it at least once, just in case. Next one was to adopt the select board rules and procedures. Does everybody have a chance to read through the rules and procedures? Any questions in regards to the rules and procedures? Because sometimes things do um, <clears throat> change from year to year. I didn't study them, I read quickly. I, I guess the only thing that came to my mind was just uh, having been on the school board. Mm -hmm. uh, one nice thing with the school board is I actually personally like the meetings starting later. I'm just throwing out there because sometimes like you come from your job and you rush right to the meeting or, you know, or something like that. Or, or if you've got kids and activities, most of the activities are some in the five, six o'clock hour and you're kind of running to get here. Um, I know we moved a couple of meetings over the years to, to 630. 6.30 or 7 o'clock. Yeah. Do we still want to just leave it at 6? Do we have any conversations about changing time, date, or oh. any of that? Or are we good to keep it all the same? Well, what works for everybody? 6 o'clock works for me. Yeah. And what a, you know, not yeah, that it has to be me. But... What about Jordan? He's got business. You know, oh, yeah, guys. Jordan might be there. <laughs> Jordan might have a problem with this. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm not going to be the only one to uproot the whole thing. So, so, so we'll just keep it at six, second and fourth Mondays at okay. six. Okay. But if something, <clears throat> we'll say this, we have adjusted, as you know, for Chris's schedules, he's been, you know, cause he coaches basketball. If something comes up for you, yeah. everybody's pretty flexible about that sort of thing. So that's, that's fine. Yeah. You know, we used to do it earlier in the winter and later 
in the summer. We used to do like seven o'clock in the summers and six in the winter um, <laughs> in a different town just because people had, you know, if they mm -hmm. were roofers or excavation contractors or whatever, you know, they're like, <laughs> we need to be later, but yeah. so. So just a question on number five, on the organization. We've mm -hmm. um, done it in the past where <clears throat> the four select people would vote and Chris, if there was a case of a tie, you would vote. Yep. So this says that um, you can make motions and, and vote. Which he did and he's done in the past. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, no, and, and they, we looked at this, I think because of that, because I, Chris occasionally will make a motion. No. Yeah. And it says here, he may make motions and vote on all questions. Right. He has been the tiebreaker though before. Right. Yeah, I, I mean, I typically don't vote. I mean, and I can't even, yeah. I think we've only had one time. No, I had tie breaking yeah. move, but yeah. most of the time it goes pretty smooth yeah. on that. I guess the one thing that we can talk about is, you know, you don't necessarily have to make seconds. You could make a motion and you could, you know, I guess you, you could do things multiple ways. You can have the yeah. conversation first, then you can make a motion and a second and all in favor, or you could make a motion, have conversation, and then, then take your final vote. Robert's rules, Robert's rules require a motion before you talk about it. Yep, first, right. and then discussion. So you have to get it on the floor. And do we, so do we want to, because um, I know we had learned, I don't know, a year or two ago that we don't necessarily have to do seconds. Um, we, we have done it. It works well. Let's not up to the apple. Okay. okay. So we'll make sure we do a motion. Motion and a second, then we'll make discussion. We have to have three of us here to do anything. So, mm -hmm. right. Okay. So, we'll That's motion. True. There's a topic you all don't want to talk about, but one person does. If you have to have the second, it kind of well, so it stops it. It doesn't happen. Exactly. It right. kills it right there. So, we'll just motion second, and then we'll bring it to the floor to talk about. Mm -hmm. Yep. Good. All right. <clears throat> uh, anything else on there? Or are we good? We really haven't changed anything. So, unless there's anything else, I just need a motion to adopt the select board rules and procedures so moved. as written. Second. Okay, all in favor? All right. All right. <clears throat> Next few, Mike, I have a question. If all the folks that are listed have been. Um, Yep. Okay. Contacted and said they'd do it again. Okay. So just. <laughs> we are. <laughs> Dave's afraid we're signing people up. Well, we'll make sure we do it right. So we'll just make, <clears throat> make the, I just need a motion to appoint um, Paul, Eric, Jack to um, Royalton Senior Center Board. So moved. And just need a second. Second. And is there any other discussion on any of those individuals or. <clears throat> okay. All in favor? Okay. And then I need a motion to appoint uh, Matt Ian um, as Bethel's EC fiber representatives. So moved. Second. Okay. Any further discussion on that matter? Well, I just have a question as to what, what they do as a representative. It's kind of like Tom Burgos is. A representative on yep. Tri Valley. Mm -hmm. So, and I, and I don't know, I don't know how much they're representing nowadays. I just, I don't know. I know it was a hot topic. I, I remember when this was put together, and it was mainly because at that point Bethel was the main startup yep. for mm -hmm. East Fiber. Mm -hmm. um, so we wanted to have kind of a an opportunity to have discussions with them as they were mapping things out and mm -hmm. rather than have to come back to the select board all the time. And, and now the EC fiber is pretty much everywhere, everywhere, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't you know, know, in the region, is there really, I assume they're on a board. Do they, they really do they, anything now? Or I, I mean, I know they still go to the meeting, so yeah. I assume that. Well, I, has I had a, a situation with EC fiber that's what a couple of summers ago mm -hmm. and I contacted our representatives on the board and I really didn't get, anywhere hmm. going through that direction. I ended up going a different direction and, and having the issue resolved. So I'm just curious. I have no idea. Call Delta. What we do. We can. Uh, I got a, a guy over in Woodstock that I talked to who's 
on the board, the actual EC board uh -huh. that was able to resolve the situation. So. Oh, good. So maybe um, when we go home tonight, each one of us will contact Ian or Matt, find out or Matt throw in a, now we have a question in regards to the EC Fiber and see That's if right. gets back to us. That's we'll right. see if he's doing one. Well, I'll, I can email Matt. Ask yeah, him. I, I was wondering the same thing I was looking at because. I, I know a couple of people over there and I have not heard their names. So Yeah, so I'll ask them if they attend regular meetings. I don't think the, the board, people on the board are not necessarily the recipients of complaints or problems well, or be able to get, you know, into the, into the feed chain. just got them to where you have to go. They, they say they're, yeah. I mean, I know, I know the lady down the, down in Royalton, that that's my number. Yeah. I got a problem. Yeah. All right. Of course, we'll, we'll 17, 18 years ago when they were, you know, pretty much starting out, it was a hot topic at that point. Right. Well, um, I'll reach just, out to Matt and ask him what they... If you tend to what is meetings, it that you guys what do? is it that you yeah. do? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I'll ask Matt. All right. We'll send him an email. So we had a motion. We had a second. Um, so all in favor? All right. All right. Uh, motion to appoint Stan Capron to uh, be the wear of coal and wood. Mm -hmm. Do we still need a wear of coal? Apparently, and wood? I asked. Because I thought that was one that went mm -hmm. bye bye. No, no, what went by? There was. Um, what was the other one? Huh? Fence viewer. No, fence viewers still on. We still have fence viewers, but there was something else that did get removed. I can't think of it right now. Like grand juror got removed, um, town agent got removed. Um, I thought the, it's more I thought of an that one was getting. I asked Kelly too, to but... look into it, but um, so it's more you know, honestly, it's just like an honorary title. Mm. Some. Okay. So just. Oh, about. okay. Never mind. Yeah, Motion but... to appoint Stan. So moved. Second. Hey, well, anything, any further discussion on that? All in favor? Uh, All right. I'm just wondering how the way it looked. Yeah, <laughs> I think it used what to be measure? where it was used to be, and Some, maybe they've just changed measure. it. It was inspector of wood and wear of coal. Mm -hmm. So you got to think, think back to the early mm -hmm. days. People used to, these. yeah, because yeah, they'd I'm be. Saying that. So Actually, we did have one. They somebody didn't think they got a full quarter full wood. Quarter wood or something, yeah. And they went out. But coal. Yeah, the coal. coal. I know. Coal <laughs> I don't even. Yeah, does anyone burn coal anymore? I don't know, but we have do, had do, the wood do issue. You want to admit it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. But, I mean, these are the things that you know have been around for uh -huh. you know hundreds of years, and uh, it's well, that's that what it's makes still... Vermont. But you, every once in a while, special. there is something that yeah, pops up. Yeah, we did. Right? Yeah, we sent people out last year to look at a fence. Yeah, and um, we did. We had to send someone. Last year we have to be... Will that be on like next meeting? Next meeting, because we're trying to find a third. Okay. And um, these were the easy ones. These are the ones that people got back to Kelly on. Okay. And um, but yeah, but yeah, somebody didn't think they got a full quarter of wood, so. It goes out and it's counts funny. pieces. One, two, three. It's funny the calls you. <laughs> so, all right. I think we had a. Did we have a motion? Yeah. In a and second. Yeah. And we're just right. all in favor. Uh, okay. And then a uh, motion to appoint Dave to uh, White River Valley Ambulance Board. So second. Okay. Any further discussion on that? I know that one is rather active. Yeah, yeah, and he's a good representative. And he seems like he's liking it still. Yeah, and yep, exactly. And it's a good tie-in between the fire department and the ambulance. So he did throw something out there about potentially them wanting to add another ambulance or buy another one yeah. or something. Yeah, he was talking to you and I about oh that. Just the price tag on it was scary. Yeah. But oh boy. When talk scary is gonna be the price tag on the you fire truck. Price tag of the truck that just got destroyed. I know. Yeah, he'd we didn't cheap. Thank God for insurance. All right, all in favor? Aye. Okay. Oh, right, so we got the annual. Oh, should I ask Owen about this one? I emailed Owen, but he didn't get back to me. Uh, annual appointment, so we did have, uh, Owen, you're on, um, so feel free to interject, but we did have um, a request um, to appoint um, an individual to, uh, so Gene Cross, a, had a request to appoint to the equity and inclusion committee as well as the energy committee. Yeah, I sent you an email, Owen, but I didn't hear back. I, I'm assuming he's attended meetings or something, or you recruited him at town meeting? Um, we did not recruit him. He has attended some meetings when he was on the select board. Um, so um, 
yeah, I guess there's there's a neutral, it's a neutral response <laughs> from us. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. So typically on the on the committees, we we don't usually um, police the individuals that are going on and off a committee. Um, unless maybe we get to the point where we have like, whoa, we got too many people on a committee, mm -hmm. which I don't know if that'll ever happen. Right. <laughs> um, you know, so I, I guess sometimes we just check in with the committees to see what they have for a size. And, you know, as we, most of us understand that if you get a committee bigger than, you know, mm -hmm. say eight to 10, then, you know, it can be tricky to have meetings with more people than that. So, right. but very seldom do we ever have yeah. five, No. you know, so yeah. Um, yeah. How many, how many would that bring you guys up to Owen in your committee now? And then how many, um, that, would that would bring us to six, six. So you, yeah. So you have room then. Okay. Yeah. And then I think James, he just stepped off of the committee recently. So that, yeah, that would put us at six. Okay. Yeah. And then the energy committee would be at what? Do you know? Three. Three? Three. No. Cause there's Stevie, Stevie, Scott, um, Ber Burgos, um, no. What's his last name? Vince. Vince Bergamo. Ver Bergamo, thank you. And Scott this morning said that he and Bergamo were the only two on it. Yeah, no, you appointed Stevie a while ago. But so, yeah, so that he would make four. four. No, and we also appointed um, the gentleman from Campbell. Yeah, Josh Warren. Josh Warren. Wardell. Wardell. So there you do, go. Do, we did have two appointed individuals from other towns they, at one point. They Are they both gone? graduated and resigned, yeah. yeah. So yeah, so that would make them five. So it'd be five and yeah. six, okay. We also, two Jordans, usually if someone comes in and asks about a committee, we usually, my recommendation is always the same. Go to a couple meetings, because if that's not the committee for you, go try out another one, because you have a fit somewhere. So we usually encourage them to attend. And Jean has attended energy and equity inclusion committee. In, in some towns where they have a lot of participation in committees, a lot of times what will happen is the committees will kind of take in and then we'll go through the committee and say, do we want to add this individual? Yeah. And then they come to the select board for approval, but we haven't really even gotten to that point with no. the, the only, amount of people. The yet, only but. one that's different than that is the planning commission. Yeah. The planning commission has to vote on the person first, and then they bring their recommendation to the select board who approves it. But that's the only committee that's that's different. Okay, so we had a motion and a second. Um, all in no. favor? No, we didn't. I thought we no. had one. Mm -mm. Did we not have a motion? No. Okay. So I just need a motion. So moved. Okay. Second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Jordan. Okay. Oh, let's see. <laughs> I do not know how to pronounce that. So <clears throat> central market. You're on your own. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I just got to laugh every time I see the new um, liquor license thing in there. It's like, oh, this is a Pam gave me this version. She showed it to me. I said, this is better than what you were giving them before. So I said, well, they've gotten so crazy that they have. They um, used to be very easy, though, to. to yeah. And this one yeah. was a little different. Um, yeah. So she told me, yeah. So I saw her using this. And I'm like, perfect. Yeah. So. so then, so when it comes to the. <laughs> <laughs> the liquor licenses or tobacco licenses and even and even now the marijuana one is for the most part we are a rubber stamp for it um even though we are a formal um commissioners, commissioners <laughs> we really have no power <laughs> so as long as the state of vermont has accepted them then and we uh we stamp it and and then they have to follow the the rules and procedures set forward by the state of Vermont. Um, sometimes we can ask, sometimes they may have uh, maybe like a, a catering permit. So um, that goes beyond, beyond their doors. So let's say I'll make it up. Let's say Babe's bar wanted to cater event here. Well, can't use this one. Um, well, Dave, wanted to cater. Just had his. Yeah. I wanted to cater at the white church. Let's say. Yeah. yeah. So we would, <clears throat> we would talk about a catering permit and we, and sometimes we have a little bit more opportunity with that. Mm -hmm. So like if they were going to say split it 50, 50 inside and outside, then you could say, you know, how would the outside be looking? You know, yeah. how would you, how would you protect it? So people were coming in and out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I weren't yeah. passing out call through yeah. babes and Babes also has an outside outdoor consumption permit. So that looks a little different when that comes. And they're very specific about what their area is, how they're gated off. Yeah, and they have to. 
part of the better control also. It is, but yeah. you guys still have, you know, you say about say. hours and that sort of thing. So. Yeah, we can have hours to talk about, you know, if we think, I don't know, if they, if they requested to go to 11, you know, is, is that an appropriate time? Right. Um, or, or if it was outside for a period of time. So, but for the most part, it's, <laughs> we just rubber fun. stamp it and that's the end of it. So, um, <clears throat> Now, the other thing that was brought to our attention was that, because uh, I was sitting at a select board meeting a year or two ago, was what I thought was unique there is before they approved their liquor license, they would ask if they had any outstanding tax, water, or sewer bills. Oh, that's right. And I thought that was neat, because I was mm -hmm. like, I never even thought about that. <clears throat> yeah. So they would, you know, so they would have to go through and make sure that they were either caught up or had a plan with them. They must not do that anymore. To, to move forward. So I didn't know, I know. just I throwing that out there. I don't no, know. No, we looked into that last year. Did we have? Yeah, yeah, we looked did we into have it. power of that? No. No? No. Well, the year before. No power yeah, we, No, we looked into that. Yeah. yeah. I don't believe so. so. Remember, we looked into that. I think the answer was no can do. So, no can do. No can I'd do. Have to, I'd have to revisit that, but I don't think you can. Yeah. I feel like that was the answer, but it was a while ago. So, so in this case, um, what we're looking at here for Central Market is a second class liquor license. And then Champlain Farms is looking for a second class liquor license, a tobacco license, and a tobacco substitute endorsement. So, what's the substitute like vaping? That's what I think. Yeah. I would assume. Yeah. That's my guess. Yeah. yeah. So just that was new. and we can't. I hadn't uh, seen that, that one. No, exactly. I hadn't seen that either. Are they getting rid of like all the flavored vapes now? I, that's what the they, they, I thought that they were with legislation. Yeah. yeah, I yeah. thought they had done that. Yeah. No, I, I think it is. I mean, and yeah, it, so yeah. they could still have just regular, you know, tobacco right. flavors. But you're right. Yeah. So I uh, just need a motion to approve those. So moved. And a second. Second by Paul. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Um, then we have uh, next is Bethel's updated village center. Yep. So I put this in your packet just so you could see what the designated village grants you or grants the businesses in your town. So we have to do the application. You know, we have to renew every eight years. Dietrich's in the process of getting all the paperwork together. We get letters from two rivers. We submit a copy of the town plan. The select board has to make a motion to approve it. And it obviously gives us a priority for state grants, which is our, always nice, as well as um, building and general services. It also gives tax credits for some of the people that buy the buildings and make improvements. So there really is a good, certainly a, a big reason to, to keep your designation. Uh, you could have a downtown designation, a village designation. In Bethel, we have a village designation. So. So these are tax credits that are available to a shop owner, yep. a business owner to use yep, a, to as, well as, the, yep, as well as as well as the town. And, and you've had people and take advantage of that yeah. as well. Sure. So, yep. Yep. So I'm assuming that everything that we have mm -hmm. designated in the past were yep. sticking with it. Yep, everything. there's no changes to the outline yeah. of the designation area. And right now, what is our village designation area? I should have brought the map. It starts it's, at the it's feet. It's a little funky and it goes, um, cause it has like, it has a yellow line around it and it, it doesn't go up. It doesn't go very far up church street. So, um, it's mainly just your downtown it doesn't go all the way to the town office. Yeah, so it's really just somewhere like the three way up yeah, to the lumber yard. It doesn't go all the way. I don't think it includes Bethel Mills. Oh, it doesn't? No, it's kind of funny when you look at it, it kind of cuts yeah. around a little bit, but. And then it doesn't go up Church Street very far? It goes up a ways, but not all the way. It doesn't go all the way to Sand Hill. Huh, you would think it would go like to the school. Well, no, you know, no, 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 no. Huh. I think if you were a village maybe, but no. Yeah. But okay. I mean a downtown, but as a village, no designation. So it doesn't go that far. It's, but it's funky because you could see some houses are in it, some aren't, and there's like a real yellow line that goes around it. Now, so. do we also take advantage of historic the people that own buildings it. can. Okay. So the, those are benefits for historic tax credits are available for people that are doing, you know, have a historic building in the downtown. So, and that when we know for a fact that many people have taken advantage of some of the tax credits. And of course we know we've got multiple grants because of it. We got the, the one that we just did from ACCD for the better Bethel for all. That was because of that. Um, and we've got municipal planning grants that puts us um, 
up for that. We also got a bike ped mm -hmm. grant. So um, it helps us to, you know, if we're like when we did the 2.8 million and we were doing water. So I mean, yeah. all that. So it definitely carries some weight. Okay. Oh, good. Nice. You might want to. You want to see the map? No. I can bring I was, it up. I was just curious where. <clears throat> How far quite, up? Not quite as simple as I thought it was. How far? No, head. it's not cut and dry. How far up? Bethel Mills, and then across from the entrance up to this side, goes all the way down to it looks like the top or last house on the left side of the road as you leave South Main. Mm -hmm. Comes back around, does include the town office from oh, there. Yes. Uh, and then Feeney's house, the town park. Um, right there across the bridge, yep. back through the village, and then it goes up to the white church. Yep. That there way. You go. Yeah. yeah. It's it's kind of funky the way it goes yeah. around certain houses. Oh, I didn't think we were in it. Yeah, that's weird. I remember, yeah, because yeah, we well yeah, doesn't it was, doesn't help the town office any, but it helps the town. Yeah. So, well, so we're working on the application. Uh, we got, like I said, so the letters are, we have to get letters and obviously there's a whole packet you have to submit along with a detailed letter of the last eight years of everything that we've done for grants and you know, so it's, it's a process, mm -hmm. but we'll get it done. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion on that? Hearing none. Uh, all in favor. Uh, all, right. all right. Thanks Adam. And I will quickly try to get you up to speed on this one, Jordan. So, um, <laughs> quickly, well, time I won't be, cool. I will, I will give you the cliff notes version. I can give you more behind the scenes, but anyway, so, um, um, so the town is always, uh, there's oftentimes we have to look at roads based upon their classifications. It could be, could be a third class road that maybe isn't up to standards. So do we want to leave it a third class and bring it up to standards? Do we make it a fourth class road? Do we want to or bring it down to a trail or something like that? So there was a section of road on on right road that um, that was up with questions um, by landowner last year, well, actually two years ago, and uh, we. We um, started the process last year of uh, de declassifying um, a piece of that road. Um, so right road's kind of <clears throat> difficult. So when you get on right road, you go up to the farm and just past the farm, there used to be a gate there. Uh, and it was third class road all the way up to the farm. And then when you get to the gate, it was another like two tenths of a mile, which was you know, a goat path that's still <laughs> third class road. And then, and then it became a fourth class road yep. all the way to Rochester. Uh, so border. we had, we had some different options of what we want to do there. It had been talked about, I think when I first got on the board um, years ago, there was um, a period of time where uh, we used to have what we called ancient roads and they had a, uh, I think it was like 2000, 16 15 or something they had to designate everything either fourth class or nothing and and that road had come up at that point as it makes no sense because we can't get the plow truck to plow all the way down there because we can't turn around so nothing ever came out of it but anyways the landowner one of the landowners had some um, complaints about it and wanted to do some development on his road um, so the board we met up there in fall mm -hmm. late summer and and we had looked at it and we'd made the recommendation um, to uh, discontinue the road. Um, so for now, going forward, anything from the farm um, up is, has been discontinued. Um, so there's a bit of a process that comes through that, as we all found out. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, so there's a, we meet on site um, and with the lawyers and, um, and then um, there's a waiting period because we looked at it in November and we yeah. didn't issue the deeds until March. So right now there was, yeah, there was a waiting period where, where they could um, uh, contest it. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't contested. So now, um, now some of the landowners are getting some quick claim deeds. So, and we don't is, as standard practice have to issue quick claim deeds, but they had requested them. So it was one party had requested. So the other one said, well, if they're getting one, I'm going to get one. So basically it just transfers our interest in the road. And at them. this point they have, they have land on each side of the road. So it becomes, you know, 
who owns to where. Mm-hmm. So um, these quick claim, claim deeds help they can, they can help establish survey where the center of the road exactly is. Yeah. yep so, exactly so at this point it's out of the town's hand you yeah. now the landowners um have full right over that that piece of roadway so these were just um the quick claim deeds that we knew would be coming um from each individual who requested it so at this point they're just a motion to authorize i guess myself to sign yeah. those mm-hmm. so we could do them together yeah, I think we could do both for for both um, uh, for Brian Wright, Emily, and Jesse Wright as well. And Kirby, Kirby. Brian Kirby, like, Emily, and Jesse. Oh, I missed that. I'm sorry. Oh, Brian Kirby, Emily, and Jesse Wright as well as Beverly, Andrew, Adam, Justin, and Joel. Motion. So second. Okay. Any further discussion Jordan, on those? Jordan moved it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. All right. So that's the eleventh, and then there you go. I'm here. Yep. So you're just gonna sign yet yeah, your name as select board chair. Bye. There you go. Okay. That's fine. And then um, no later. This is the this the first thing. I'm sorry. Here's the second page of Beverly Rights. There. So what we'll do is I'll send these with a letter to Brian and Beverly Wright saying that if they want them recorded in the land records, then they can work with our attorneys happy to do the PTTR for them as long as they pay the recording fees. There is no transfer tax. So I'll send a copy each with the same letter to both. All right. Uh, town manager's report, which I didn't see one. Yep, there is. There one. was? Yeah. When did I not see it? Huh? I didn't see it. Huh. Select board meeting agenda notes, and that was right over there. Huh. I don't know. No, I didn't copy your it. I didn't copy your packet, so I don't know. Sorry about I that. I thought maybe because it was after the election, you didn't have much stuff. Though. No. I saw the... I saw the Australian ballot results. Yep. I think it's. I don't know what to tell you. With me. I don't know. It wasn't right after you. It's right here. Oh, no, it's right there. Okay. Sorry. So, yeah, I, was I saw. I saw agenda. Yeah. Mind. Okay, you're good. Um. So yeah. So you got the election oh, okay. results. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. That's okay. And um. So we. I finished submitting all of our FEMA projects for the July flood, which was, you know, about two and a half million dollars. So we, that's between FEMA and federal highway. So our person, our PDMG, Carlos has left. We've requested another one. Hopefully um, she'll come in and we, her and I could just sit down basically in just a few hours and go through every single submission and make sure that they're not missing anything. And they're all good to go. I had to just upload all of our roads and standards today to every single project because they were giving me grief about 15 inch culverts. And I'm like, no way, because the bridge and standards say we can automatically and put in 18 inch. Mm-hmm. So I uploaded that to every single project, explained that to several people. Um, so just as we're finishing that up later this week, I have to do another um, initial intake with FEMA because of the December 18th storm, which we incurred about $30,000 worth of damage. I believe that at this point, we won't be bidding any of that work out that we'll do it in-house. Um, that's the take on it right now. So we'll see as we get further through the project. So just when you think FEMA's- So over, I got a little confused. So when you said, <clears throat> I don't know if you wrote it in here or uh-huh. you sent it to me or something, when you said that looks like they're going to pick up on the 30,000. Yeah, that's about the, that was my quick estimate on the December 18th flood event cost us 30,000. And we just barely found out that the president, that the, well, we knew the governor had made a declaration request and President Biden just approved it. So that means that's a separate event. So uh, I had a couple of questions. Yeah. So one is 30,000 count the work that, because we did some work. Right. I mean, we had to go out there and remaintain roads and we added some gravel and spots and there's some stuff that we haven't touched. Right. I don't know yet. Because and then does that mean we only get 
87 and a half percent of that mm -hmm. 30,000 or do we get all, you know what I mean? Right. So we'll only get, we'll get everything. Yeah. We'll get our 87 and a half percent because so we're glossing this over. So FEMA pays you 75% because we Bethel passed some floodplain laws. The state pays us an additional 12 and a half percent. So during any FEMA event, we're out 12 and a half percent, but I don't know yet until I do the intake. I'm not sure what they're including just now. Cause I know we went out there and we, you know, we, we I, spent yeah. four or five days doing some maintenance as mm -hmm. well as added gravel and spots. So I didn't yep. know if it was going to cover that plus the things well, that we haven't done. Or when I talked to my state contact, they were trying to tuck that in, but it will depend on what the times of the declaration are included, how many days they're going to put into that. If they just pick the December 18th, then the answer is no. If they give you a few days leeway, then maybe. So I don't know the answer yet until I have my intake meeting. Um, so tomorrow night, you have a meeting here at six o'clock. Um, you all should have received information from Pam about that for a BCA meeting. It's, you know, it's rare that you have two meetings back to back. So sorry about that, Jordan. Um, just kind of the way it, the way it worked out. What do you mean? He's only going to one of them. <laughs> there you go. Which one? Which the one? second one. Um, well, yeah, we'll do them all at once, but, um, well, he means I didn't go to all the other ones. Oh, oh, well, no, there's a second, basically the meeting tomorrow night's a two-parter. Oh. Uh, it's revisiting a decision that was made by the BCA the first time that needs mm -hmm. to be corrected because the math, the math was wrong. And then it will be the second part of that meeting is going to be, um, taking up a new consideration. Um, the people that, if you did not attend the first meeting, you still can participate as long as you've read the minutes and have caught yourself up mm -hmm. on the first one. Cause I did ask the attorney that, cause for that one, I had, we had to get some legal advice on how to fix them you know, correction of the BCA. Um, it was, like I said, just a math thing. Um, working on a class two roadway grant with Morgan for Camp Brook Road. Um, so we're, he's out, gonna be out looking at um, culverts up there to see what we can do on Camp Brook. I received our audit, draft audit from Sullivan and Powers. I think I got it on, um, on town meeting day. So obviously I haven't had a chance to go through that. Um, so the other thing was I had sent you all an email about the accident on Friday. So um, unfortunately uh, the, um, there was an incident uh, 80, not on I-89. The Bethel fire had responded to a rollover of a linen truck. Uh, the driver of the linen truck was not injured. Um, they were parked where they needed to be parked under instruction of BSP had out their flares and all precautions were taken. And unfortunately, um, VSP, we don't know the what has happened there yet. There's a full investigation between the VSP and Department of Transportation. Unfortunately, the officer is still in critical condition um, in Hanover. Obviously, our thoughts, prayers go out to him and his family. Uh, we were very lucky. We had two firefighters that weren't far away from that truck. So we were very lucky that nobody else um, was injured. Obviously, at this point, our truck is totaled, um, as is was, of course, the cruiser. Um, Sable and Sons hauled both of the our truck and the cruiser to the impound lot at the Royalton Barracks. Um, Dave Aldrigetti and I, um, obviously, I made contact on Friday with our insurance agency, uh, which is VFIS. We have a special insurance for firefighting and for equipment there. Um, they have been in contact with Dave. He talked to three different people, one for the truck, one for the liability, and one for the equipment that was on it. Um, some equipment may or may not be able to be salvaged. We took some stuff off it, but it's being inventoried and to see what we have. So um, at this point, um, it's easy to say we will be without a fire truck um, most likely two to three years because they are out. It takes a while to get a cab and a chassis and just depending where we are in the process. We did have today, which was Heartland Fire Department, reached out to myself and Dave to lend us a piece of equipment. Um, at this point, Dave said, you know, we're okay. We've got, you know, a couple pieces and what, that we can get by with till we figure out what's gonna happen. Um, we had heard from our insurance agency that once we pick a manufacturer to, to build it, cause it'll be built, um, was sometimes those agencies may have a lender. So we'll kind of see what we have. Our insurance does cover 
a rental fire truck of two or two fifty a day, a max of ten thousand dollars. And when Dave said to the lady, uh, he said, "You know, we'll be looking at two to three years." She's like, "Really?" He's like, "Yeah, you know, it's that's how far out they are." So, uh, so we'll see what comes of it. It's very early, <clears throat> very kind of early to tell. Obviously, the VSP and the DOT are doing a very detailed um, investigation. So, at this point. Um, you know, we're, we're just waiting uh, to see our insurance company obviously is reaching out to the VSP and um, they, the appraiser will be going down to look at, um, to look at the fire truck. And as we get more information, we'll let you know, but this is not going to be a quick process. We're not going to have a fire truck in the next year. It's just probably not going to happen. And um, so, but we'll see how it all works out. The good I, took, I had a chat with David, and the good news that I thought I heard was the fact that we recently changed our insurer. We did. And yeah. we got replacement cost rather than actual value. Exactly. Yep, we did. Oh, that was one of yes. those. That's huge. It is. And yeah, I was, that was going to be my next question is, yeah. you know, what, what is it going to look like based upon what that was worth versus what we're going to have yeah. to get and how are we going to pay for it? Right. Well, difference? we had changed from, um, we had left VLCT, uh, the fire part of the fire department had left VLCT to go to, um, went through gains insurance to, to, we call it VFERS. And it's very much for firefighters. We also get other insurances through them for firefighters. And that was one of the things at the time was the chief and the assistant chief were able to set uh, replacement value. And um, so I cannot recall, and neither could Dave, just within all the hullabaloo that's been going on about when we had done that last, but obviously, we were not at fault here. And, and um, so we expect that um, the process will go very smoothly. I did reach out today to the commander of the state police barracks. That's Lieutenant Jerry Parton, a very nice man. And just let him know we were thinking about, you know, as officers and if there was anything that, you know, the family or whatever we could do to certainly let us know. So our, you know, we had some firefighters. We, at the end uh, or during the process, we had, uh, Randolph Fire Department, maybe Randolph Center Fire Department, um, <clears throat> Royalton. So big thank you to them, mutual aid, because obviously we had to close down the interstate for quite a bit of time. They were very helpful. They also helped um, with extrication. Um, Dart obviously came and and took the trooper to to Hanover. So at this point, um, you know, we're very thankful for everybody's assistance, and um, we're just waiting to see. You know, you what said the hospital's pretty crowded with uh, officers from Vermont and New Hampshire. I'm sure that's true. Support the family, and and they did a very. They're doing a thorough investigation. DOT weighed our fire truck on scene. You know, we were underweight, but even so, we're an emergency vehicle. We would have been exempt to a point, but we were underweight anyways. Um, so, but that was just you know standard procedure, and um, so at this point. We're just kind of waiting and seeing, and it could be, I expect it'll be a couple more weeks before we hear, really hear much by the time the appraiser comes and, and BSP finishes their investigation. So we'll, I'm fortunate and hopefully, you know, to your request, hopefully we, we aren't out of pocket anything here. And this one's just too Yeah, I just, I, did, I didn't know how the insurance worked and, you know, uh, I mean, make it up if... <clears throat> If they give us a hundred thousand dollars with the replacement cost, but it costs two fifty to buy yeah, a new one, you know, yeah. more like seven. Well, you know what yeah. I'm mean? thinking, like, <laughs> yeah. Who, yeah, like, do we, yeah, like some insurances will pl will pay for replacement costs, yeah. not that's just like, what, what actual costs. Yeah, and it depends on the value that they put on it at the time, which I honestly don't remember, and neither did Dave. We've had multiple yeah. conversations today, and um, you know, it's a lot. The other thing I was going to say is that there will be a debriefing for um warva obviously i was should have put my thanks out to them any other firefighting agencies that were involved they'll be holding a debrief tomorrow night i believe at the bethel fire department so you know there's a lot there for yeah. to unpack for firefighters and um you know when they see you sometimes it's the worst day of your life and so these guys walk away with that so they did a really good job and um and we're just you know I'm going to wait and see. So I'll keep you updated as I hear, but I expect it'll be a little bit before I hear much more. I saw the cruiser on the flatbed pulling into the <clears throat> barracks. Yeah. Uh, I can't believe anybody would survive that. Yeah. I mean, and, it just yeah. was just one giant green pile of shredded metal. Yeah. And so far, I mean, the good news is that the trooper is, 
you know, was, is in great shape and, you know, I'm very physically fit. And so hopefully that's, you know, oh, the, works the out. The interesting part was David said that no one saw it. No they one. Were, they were paying no. attention to the rolled over truck. Yeah. And all of a sudden there was an explosion. Yep, exactly. Yep. The two firefighters that were nearby, because obviously we had to do insurance work. So I interviewed the driver of the, of the truck and, um, Luckily they weren't in it. And, and that's what he said, but they were just far enough away that all of a sudden they just heard this hellacious noise and turned around and just started running and had no idea what, you know, what happened because they were, but thank God that they were where they were when it happened. So, um, anyway, so we'll keep you in the loop as we, you know, here, but it's, like I said, I don't think it's going to be anything we're going to solve, you know, tomorrow. And VSP has been very good to, uh, keeping Dave in the loop as to, um, certainly as to the trooper's condition. So. Yeah. Um, one thing that, um, let me know when you, when you want to, but we should probably <clears throat> think about getting that sand hill bid out soon. Oh, I've already talked to... Is that starting to heat up? It's not going to go out until the end of March, beginning of April. Okay. I already talked to... I know, it's unfortunate. I did yeah. talk to um, Mike Maynard about it. We have... Uh, they were down uh, with CAD, and, and obviously I was busy with FEMA. We have been in touch to the with the feds. We're going to bid it as two separate. We're going to bid the construction as one, paving as the other. Mm -hmm. So we're both, you know, we've been in contact with them, and and um, so it'll go out a little bit later than we want, but it will go out. I also did get a construction estimate too that I meant to send you, so I'll make a note to send you. Yeah, just you know, the <clears throat> bidding process is starting to heat up now, so it's. It's always better to be on the early end than the late end. Which we know, but so. we both ran into... Even, I if, even if the project doesn't get done until right. August, yeah. at least you... It, it definitely won't. I think people we, are hungry Honestly, now. we're not going to be paving until, my guess is, September. Yep. Something like that. So, but, uh, yeah, no, it just... We've been working on it, and I talked to Mike about it, caught up with him last week, and, and that's where we're at. So, but I can send you... I meant to send it to you, the construction cost estimate. So, because he gave me a preliminary estimate. So, uh, so I'm sorry, Jordan. So what we're talking about is this has been ongoing for a while. We received an earmark from Senator Sanders yeah. for 600,000. We have $150,000 match to redo Sand Hill. Yeah. And they'll do the stormwater rebuild and as well as repave. It's something really took a beating after Irene and, um, yeah. and has ever since. So we're doing the water project, our $2.5 million water project that we're in the you know, that will start up again in April. Um, one side will be doing water and then, uh, you know, obviously in a perfect world, the same contractor bids and gets the storm water since they'd just be doing the opposite side of the road. Mm -hmm. And we'll go from there. If we're gonna be able to pave right behind it, we may be able to just keep it um, down with either gravel or, um, you know, recycled asphalt for a short period of time before we repave the whole thing. But it's, it's gonna depend on the lag time between water storm water on the other side of the road and then a full repave but so we have seven hundred fifty thousand dollars to get that done so that will so will be that project will go this year as well all right i'm good of course any update on the cla appeal oh yeah sir so i actually spoke to rick benson new to both of us He's I've never done a CLA appeal. And uh, so we went through the channels and he uh, spoke to Jen Meyer. She is our local person. And she answered all of um, Rick's questions. And but she did agree to look at a few of the properties. He had sent her the documentation. Then he reached out to her again today because he was still doing a little digging. He had to call Mo and Judy about one of the properties. And she was willing to look at a few. So if indeed it's revisited, then our CLA may change um, and go up a little bit. But honestly, it's not gonna, it, it would be a small percentage, but it could rise. Um, so anyway, so she's still going through that process. My guess is we'll have an answer this week for sure on what it's gonna do to our CLA. But like I said, if it goes up, which would be great, but we're not going from 70 to 90, you know, <laughs> nothing like that. So that's where we're at. And then, um... Can you give us an update on Oscar and the cruiser? My, my sure. favorite, favorite Oscar topic. will be working until the end of June. Um, that is the deal that, that we have. Um, the 
Sheriff's office is interested in purchasing the cruiser, but the select board had kind of wanted to hang on to it for a little bit. I did get an amount from Oscar, you know, an estimate from him about the cost of the equipment that's in it. I have not gone on to whatever Kelly blue book or wherever to go look up the value of the cruiser itself yet. Um, but the, we do know the sheriff's office is interested in it. Um, probably more for, uh, not to put in service on a regular basis, but maybe more for like, you know, they're sitting on interstate or something like that. So, but the point, the select board had not made a decision to sell. They were waiting for the outcome of town meeting. And um, there was kind of a mixed bag on who wanted to hang on to it and who didn't. So, so still patrolling. He still works, you know, just a little bit. He works in conjunction with, you know, the sheriff's office. He's talked to them and they know. I think he's, you know, I just said, look, he's done a nice job for us. And told him he could leave any time, but we'd certainly, you know, June 30 would be it. And um, he's worked a little bit here and there and takes a couple calls as he can. And people still call him, you know, they have his number to talk to him about certain ongoing issues that they've had. And he has done a good job feeding those issues to, to the sheriff's office to catch them up. So, yeah. So he's slowly working his way out, but yeah, the cruiser was kind of no decision had been made on the cruiser, just that we well, obviously I mean, had to wait for town meeting. Right. Yeah, we wanted to wait for town meeting to see, make sure that it, you know, the budget passed with it in it and nobody, you know, wanted to take it out of it or, yeah. <clears throat> and then also, um, the, you know, the sheriff's department was interested in it. But. Yeah, he wants a price. What, so is that, is it still Kelly Blue Book? Is that the best website to look up values? Or? There's another one. I thought there was another one too. Oh, yeah. Huh? Yeah. NADA, that's it. NADA, all right. I knew there was another Because right, awesome. we kind of talked about, Paul, that, Thank you. Well, I, I think what we had talked about initially was, you know, stripping the hardware out of it and, you know, trying to get a, like a, any equipment, yeah. Um, you know, sell it third party wise, mm -hmm. uh, which would carry a value. But then, then the sheriff's department was interested in it, but I don't know if they really wanted to pay. They don't value book for it, but you guys have met him. This guy he, makes a pitch well, every time. <laughs> but it, I was wondering if it'd be worth asking Ryan what the trade off would be for. What we value the car at, and if you give us extra hours, kind of barter with them. Oh, and so the cash. So get more out of it than what it's worth, maybe like right. extra grand in hours. And yep. Yeah, I can deal on something like that. Yeah, the difference between what we want and what he's willing to give. Well, yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> well, the only thing I worry about, <laughs> not say that it would happen, but the only thing I worry about that is like, Maybe there was some time that we were going to get anyways that now becomes like that was car time. You know what I mean? Like you, you could run that type of thing. Now I will know, like, I don't know nowadays, but I remember the old days, like everybody wanted to get their hands on a crown Victoria. Right. I mean, yeah, it's true. I mean they would, you know, yep. everybody wanted one. I was like, I got to think that somebody would want to, Oh, you bet. You yeah. know, an ex police cruiser, you know, yeah, especially because they have the police package. Some I mean, people definitely want those. If I had to guess, the thing's probably worth eight to ten grand. If yeah. I had to guess, um, it does. It has, so, I think it has one hundred and sixty six. There, there's always somebody who wants on one of those. Yeah, I think it has one hundred and sixty six thousand well, miles. Most of the work on it, so they could let you know. Yeah. yeah. So we'll look. I can look at see what it says on both Kelly Blue Book and NADA, mm -hmm. and then uh, mm -hmm. and yeah, Oscar gave me an estimate about the equipment that's in it. So. The other thing we had talked, <laughs> the other thing we had talked Sorry. about Jordan and Paul, I mean, I know you guys are at most of them, but the other thing we had talked about is if we did recoup any money for the vehicle that, that we put it aside. So in case. like leave it in the cruiser fund mm -hmm. in case this, you know, sheriff's experiment doesn't work out. And then two years from now we're going, okay, we need uh to get a car and <laughs> you know, so at least we had something. Cause I think you said that we had, I don't know, we had a few thousand in there, six or seven thousand dollars in the thing so. to begin with. So, so we would have we something to start with if we thing. ever needed to. I think we paid 10 for that cruiser as we went to Massachusetts. To I had 12 on the brain after we mm. put some because I think we had to put some tires in I'd it have to and go back something and look else. At the and breakdown, it probably would be worth selling it and putting the money aside instead yeah. of letting it sit. Yeah, 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 definitely. I think that was kind of the is. thing. But some people wanted to hold on to it. Some people wanted to sell it. So, and um, currently, what we have is a we have a some people want it in their fund. Fund. So we would just take yeah, that money right. and put it in that fund and just let it sit there for a year or two until we felt comfortable. Like, okay, everything's yeah. good. And, yeah. Um, 
Or if we need to go backwards, then we can always buy it. And some people wanted to drive it. Some people wanted to let us sit in their driveway. Some people wanted as it'd be a town car. That's going to be the new uh, Weyer of Coal and Woods car. Yeah. <laughs> Stan can have it. It used to be a bit. There's a lot uh, here and a lot about uh, the Windsor County uh, Sheriff's Department taking over a lot of policing mm -hmm. everywhere. Um, just my gut and my experience over time is, is he trying to grow too fast? Is, is he going to be able, I mean, I'm concerned that Randolph couldn't get people, Orange County couldn't get people, and all of a sudden he's got enough people to take every take on everybody. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I just heard yesterday, which was, and this is distressing to me, me only, my sister-in-law lost her job. She was working as a dispatcher for them and they got rid of her. For Windsor County? Yeah. I yeah. do think that, I don't know if there was a change within state dispatching or what the deal is. I, that I can't say. I, I don't know either, yeah. but she was devastated. Yeah. She'd been working there for a long time and yeah. They're getting bigger and bigger. And yeah. I, I, know. Know. I will say they have been, he has been really getting aggressively recruiting. I don't know what he's offering for wages or what the situation is, but I've spoken to a couple of his people and they said he's, that he's really good. People like working for him. And um, so he certainly is well, definitely hoping. aggressive. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know how many sure people he, fast. yeah. And I don't know how many people he put through the Academy. The other part is because Orange County Sheriff's, you know, I hate to say this, but it seems to be tanking. I don't know who's up there. And um, and as far as Randolph, they could have had a hard time recruiting because of the politics going on in, in Randolph and the whole big, I mean, I just do front porch forum and I've seen a lot of the back and forth about the Randolph policing and the vote mm -hmm. and the cost and the, you know, it was so people may not have wanted to go there because it might've been unstable mm -hmm. for them, but you know, I, I'm not sure, but he certainly has been a go-getter because he just took over Chelsea. Yeah, I know. I know he ran on going after all the rural towns and, you know, having a centralized identity, like the sheriff's department, be the go-to for all the rural towns. Yeah. yeah. Um, other than the people that already had a department. Yeah. And he's also so, was. And I think he's done structure. that. Like, I think he's almost done that. Now, I don't know. Yeah. Now, I do know from talking with some of them, so there's two gentlemen that patrol this area. One lives, I don't know exactly, one lives in Orange County. Tunbridge. Tunbridge? Is it Tunbridge? Exactly. Mm -hmm. One lives in Orange Tunbridge County, County and the other one, one lives in Orange County, the other one lives somewhere in the Woodstock, Heartland area. Mm -hmm. So that's the two that we have. Yeah, Officer um, Howe, Deputy Howe. Uh -huh. I saw him Friday night. He had somebody pulled over and they pulled into the white church. Is he the one from Tunbridge? Yep. And, and then, then we invited him in to have some soup. And then there's Trombley? There's, 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 so, there's enough. I, I've met several that have come yeah. and I can't. And there's Tyler. Track. Yeah. So they've, yeah. they've all been in. But I do think, Dave, that he had a plan. And his plan was because they don't get much you know, certainly the money that they have to earn, they, they need to earn their money by taking over contract towns. They also earn their money by working for somebody like Pike or one of the big ones on the interstate and just sitting on those jobs. So obviously they get paid for that. But his plan was to try to reorganize because some sheriff's departments really focus on the highway work because they need to make the bank make money so that they can do other things which would be secondary. He was kind of <laughs> trying to change that model and hence coming in at a you know higher price per hour and stuff so well I'm trying I to get started just right now yeah you know, just see read and yeah. see the uh, just huge expansion really yeah. fast yeah because he did he get stock wrench he's working on it i don't know if he's got it yet or not well but... he went to that's why he wasn't at bethel town meeting and he sent um tommy because he had to be in Stockbridge because last year he lost in Stockbridge by one vote. And so he personally was going to Stockbridge. They'd asked him to come. So I didn't, <clears throat> I have no idea how Stockbridge's vote turned out, but you're right. I mean, he definitely is. He definitely had a plan. So it's something to keep an eye on Dave. And as far as uh, how the dispatching has changed, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I don't know either. I, I guess it hit me yesterday. She, yeah. Yeah. She was a mess. I'm sure. Okay. I'm sure. I, and I'm sorry to hear that. Did you have anything else in your report? Nope. All right. We have select board meeting minutes from the 26th. So I ended up having to email those to you, 
the 12th were in the packet, not yeah, I was the 26th. Say the 12th is in the yeah, packet. Yeah, exactly. So I emailed the 26th today. If you didn't have a chance to read them, then we can put it onto the next agenda. So, you know, I don't know. I, I just grab what's in the box and make the packet out of it. So I didn't. I didn't so you want to just wait till the next meeting? It depends, unless you had enough people who read them. I didn't read them. So. I'm all set. Huh? Paul, you're all set? I'm all set. I'm, I'm ready. Set. Oh, Denise, okay, good. Okay, well, you three. So just need a motion. Somewhere. Aye. Second, all in favor? Aye. 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 And we get some other communications, DRB. Let's look at the sheriff's breakdown. Uh, Equity Inclusion Committee had their meeting minutes in there. Yep. Yep, sheriff's breakdown. Yeah, so that's what you get. So we kind of talk how many hours, miles. He attaches this to our invoice. And then he gives you the breakdown of, you know, incident number, date, time, location, and then what it was a traffic stop or whatever. And then he gives you information about, um, you know, what, what it was, a lot of condition of vehicles <laughs> so, yeah. and some speed mm -hmm. limit ones. Um, no, I like that where you can yeah. just get a quick snapshot of what it is the... I remember Oscars was challenging to yeah, decipher, I guess we'll call it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it came yeah. off from yeah, I mean, he didn't data, anything, the software and it was like, he wrote. Yeah. He's trying to protect the information of people and trying to give you information. And just at the end of the day, it was like, I don't really know what I'm looking at. Yeah. Um, yeah. So at least this one seemed to be a little more formal. Yeah. So, um, so next week is, or next week, in two weeks, the agenda. So you'll have a few more appointments. Um, we need to start talking about, well, there's a couple issues we're going to visit. We also will have a public hearing on the sidewalk grant, the one that's going from the corner of uh, the Sand Hill, their John Gifford's house to the school. So we'll have another public meeting about that, about the design. Because as if you remember correctly, um, we had talked about replacing that wall and we did some drilling and you know the, we got the preliminary price tag on that just about to choke a horse. So yeah. there's no way we could do it. It was way over. We had a half million to do the project. So we're talking about as possibly just replacing the section that's leaning at, or definitely replacing just the section that's leaning. And so they ended up coming in with a couple cost alternatives. Some of them are just obviously way too expensive. We can't do, we'll probably end up replacing just that section of wall and leaving the rest. Because as you know, you had some other residents that were concerned about their trees and that sort of thing. So that will be next meeting. I had Kelly mail the uh, invitation or the announcement of the meeting to all the same residents that came before, um, you know, Mrs. Ketchum and all the Barellas and, you know, mm -hmm. whoever else lives down there. So we'll do that next meeting. The other thing we need to start talking about is uh, about the downtown. We assume that the state will be paving Main Street probably in 2026. That's about the schedule. So if there's anything that we're going to be doing for infrastructure, what we're going to do, we need to do it. We also need to start talking about Bethel for All. I got some estimates on what came out of there as far as uh, parking, uh, downtown studies, you know, what we want to do there as far as looking for grant money to decide what we're going to do. One of the hot topics is should we only have parking on one side of the street? So that's something that, yeah, that we need to talk about. And um, so I think that we'll make you guys some copies and we'll kind of start delving into that a little bit um, at the next meeting. Um, certainly, as you, you know, Joanne Marshall had asked about like a TIF district a little bit of information there. I'm not sure we'll get that out next week or in two weeks, but we'll certainly talk about that coming up. Um, I am working on updating the personnel policy and uh, working with the fire department to update, um, create actually a new manual. So what do you uh, mean manual. Prior? Yeah, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> and I answer the 600 emails. And um, so we got to start. So there's just some stuff that we need to do and, and uh, figure out what our plan is really for downtown because there's nothing I hate worse than cutting into new pavement because we, you just you look like a buffoon so we need to really talk about what, so what happened the last do. time we paved the uh -huh. villages they went and did the um church street sidewalk project immediately after it 
Yeah, we're not doing that. So we need to figure that out. So like the very also, next spring. Yeah. <laughs> it grips it up. Along with the timing of the, because the transportation alternatives, the bike ped grant, that's a half mil and that, that can take, you know, a few years. So that's yeah. another question we need to talk to them about is exactly what we're going to do there. But I can tell you at this point, that project, what we had hoped to do, or we had talked mm -hmm. about redoing the entire wall, making that all five foot sidewalk mm -hmm. um, to the school, kiss it goodbye. Mm -hmm. Not going to happen. We'll probably replace that one section. We may be able to get some five foot sidewalk in there. Worst case okay. scenario, we fix the leaning wall and we put all new sidewalk down through there to the school. We enhance the crossing down there and make that safe. There is a, you know, to cross the street down there and put some, the chickens do it illegally. Yeah. So we'll be down closer to the school and really update and bring that crosswalk up to, you know, safety code, but you know, half a million doesn't go as far as it used to. And when you bring in engineering and stuff, it's gets expensive fast. So, um, so that's, so those are just a couple of the things that we'll be, you know, starting to talk about. I got something to, to add to the list. Okay. Uh, I talked to, uh, where did I see him? In the matter, Geo Honeyberg. Yes. And they have no clue where that class four road is. The one by the Deans. Eds and Bob Deans? Yeah. yeah. He says, oh, oh, that's right. Go, go, go through the pit. I do. No, Geo, that's not the road. Oh, okay. Because he's, I did think, I did talk to you a little bit about it. Yeah. Uh, South Royalton wants to discontinue um, their, their side of. They want um, to make it a trail. Of, they want to make their side of Purim right? Perm, a trail. And I just said, it's low priority for us. It's not going anywhere. It goes to, you know, Perm ends at Bob Dean's and or Bert Dean's, excuse me, driveway. And um, <clears throat> just not a priority for us. And he's called a couple of times. I did he tell doesn't him. know where, it, where, they, where it is. I mean, he's telling me where it is. I said, no, that's not mm -hmm. where the class four road goes. Oh, maybe that's why he hasn't called in a while. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I did tell him he could talk to you <laughs> because I said, Dave's lived up there a long time. He probably has certainly some more information than I've got. Um, I tell you, but they walked it and I said, no, you didn't. Oh. <laughs> you, don't, you don't walk up where that is. <laughs> it's not walkable even now. Oh, Part no it. kidding. It's okay. got too many trees and crap in it. Oh, good. But that's why he's not calling anymore. So <laughs> we also have a list. Um, the road crews provide a list. We've had a couple of residents call. Now that we've gone through the discontinuation process once, um, there are some roads that people want discontinued. There also is a section that we need to fix that was, um, the discontinuation is vague up by, um, on Sugar Hill. It used to be near Bill Tufts and it was discontinued. And then there's a piece that was somehow re- established but the state can't figure it out neither can i we've read the documentation and they don't really lay out where it is so we need to go back up and discontinue it again and then there's also some other roads that that residents live on and they want it discontinued because they're maintaining it and and whatnot so in some of it places that you know we ended up with pinello obviously um which is a town road hence why we're going to put in a yeah, 1.2 million dollar bridge and um, so, you know, when you have roads like that, somebody maybe knew somebody back in the day. You know, so you know, like, what's the road up off of uh, Brink Hill that's just a driveway. We have several driveways that mm -hmm. we have as roads now. Yeah, yep, exactly. And there's no so, place to turn around up in there with yeah. a plow truck. Mm -hmm. So we may, exactly. So we may be looking, that's something we should look at this summer is we may end up tackling. Yeah, that's, that's, that's yes, cool. that's on the list is there's a few of them and see you know, start our feelers out to start that process. As we know, it's not an easy process to get through. It's time. Back on my, Gio said that if we wanted, he would come and talk to us about what they want to do. If you want to have him. I talked to him about it, but I said, you know, this is not a high priority for the select board at this point. And, and I'd had actually had told him to talk to you, but if he doesn't know where the road is, why waste your time? Well, I, I, I said, you can discontinue yours. yours yeah, that's what I said. Stop. Well, and that's what I said to myself. You, you can do whatever you want on your side. We're not Whether we do the whole thing or not, doesn't matter. <clears throat> right. Mm -hmm. So we can, I can get a hold of them and uh, have them come. And, um, but, but I guess we'll find out then what do you, where, are you sure you know where the road is? And, um, but yeah, they want to make it a trail is what he said. But because I was surprised that, 
you know, Bob Dean hadn't, you know, put the kibosh to it years ago or worked with the town to, you know, discontinue it, but it's still there. On the other end, Frankie Benson's end, you can't walk in there either. It's just full of vines and it's, you, and I probably, well, I'm sure there's a couple other people, that very few people have any idea where that is. Yeah. Um, so, all right, I can reach back out to him as I had said to talk to you because I figured you had the most historic knowledge at this point of what was up there. We used to farm the Fitbard farm. Yeah. We got, we dropped on the a piece of forest that was more navigable yeah. than the road. So you get down with farm equipment to hay those fields. But that wasn't where the That's road just not the road. Oh, yeah. So, all right. Well, I, I have his number and I can reach out to him and maybe now he won't want to <laughs> talk to you, but we'll find out. And he can certainly come to the town office and do his own research on our end. Um, but as I told him, I said, this is not a priority for us or the select board. So I don't have any energy to put into it. If you want to do your side, do your side. Nobody's ever going to lose it and not the way it is, especially when we have an authority to say you can't fix it. Yeah. Right, exactly. So, and you know, Bert and Gary aren't hep on going down there and doing anything. So, yeah. So, so, um, so one thing that I wanted to do this year, um, you know, having <clears throat> sat on the school board, which is nice to see different boards and what they do and what they don't do. And one thing that I did really like about the, um, so on the school board, I also sat on the supervisory board. And the su supervisory union board once a year establishes their goals for the year. Mm -hmm. And then those goals are kind of relayed to the superintendent, you know, so whatever the board established for their goals, then a majority of those goals kind of become the superintendent's goals. Mm -hmm. um, so I was thinking, you know, normally in April areas when we kind of set yep. your goals for the year. Right. And so I was, I guess my hopes would be at the next meeting, if we could spend some time maybe putting together um, some board goals for the year and, and they don't have to be high level goals, you know, uh, you know, something could be, you know, an example could be looking at some of these fourth class roads or third class road, you know, mm -hmm. reclassifications or just discontin discontinuances. Some of it could be, I don't make it up, uh, you know, the village district and, you know, yeah. uh, or, or other, you know, hot button things that we might think of. And maybe between now and then, if we want to just each one of us jot a couple of them down and then at the next meeting, we can kind of lay those out and figure out as a, as a board, <clears throat> which ones would we like to, to do, you know, I don't know, five or six of them, you know, so something you, that's attainable for us to do. You know, if we list 20 of them, you know, right. it's probably too lofty, but yeah. you know, if we put, you know, some good ones together, maybe each person, you know, comes up with one or two and, and we put it together and um, and then we can probably pick a couple of those to. Well, if we recall, maybe. this whole thing went down last year and we never got very far because the board goal was the board's goal and also coming with someone who was willing to do that mm. to, to spearhead it, which wasn't you know, me. And, um, so that was, that's probably why it died because <laughs> we all said, so we're changing it. We said, Oh no, if I, we got to do it, we're not doing it. So, um, you know, there's the, the standard business, but yeah, that was what the talk was last time mm -hmm. was that there'd be select board goals and be a select board member interested in, you know, whatever. And I'm just kind of like the rock uphill with trees. And I'm just <laughs> kind of envisioning this thing for the next town meeting day, you know, in the town report, we can write, you know, here were the goals for the year. And this is how we did on our goals. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, we did these, but we're still working on this one or, you know, that type of thing. I probably, as a fair warning, won't be able to participate in much of that because I, I uh, was part of a stir up the hornet's nest today about education funding mm -hmm. and we kind of got the uh thing started the me morning meeting with kurt we're going to start working this summer on some of the people that don't want to do things that could be done to save money oh so you're going to start well you're going to work on a committee with the state yeah oh great i'm hoping that I, I threw my hat name in the hat because i was i was there and i had Greg Hughes there. I know he spoke at the school meeting and uh, it just caught my ear. It's like, whoa, we should be doing something about this. Yeah. And Kirk says, well, we're about done. And he says, well, let's, you just give me some names and 
we'll round up some people and we'll start working this summer. So that next January, the hope is to have some bill, a bill or two for them to look at. Great. That's, that's great. Just warned that if I, if I do that, that's all I'm going to be yeah. Well, no, that's appreciate that too, because of your years of on school board and stuff. So you'd be a good person to certainly represent. You know how much of the budget you actually can touch and you understand it from that point of view. So that's great. Thank you. That, I, that'd be helpful. I know, I don't know her that well, but I know a little bit about Re Rebecca Holcomb and she's mm -hmm. going to be involved. Mm -hmm. Well, the good news is that any time, you know, the, the school budget's reasonable and the town's budget's reasonable, it's, it's always easier on us because if someone comes in and the school budget is going through the roof, then people tend to look at us as to wanting us to make up the difference, which doesn't work that way. But So that's great, Dave. Thank you for doing that. It doesn't work that way? <laughs> we have I this thought that's the way it works. Year. Yeah. Is it all, it's our fault. Right? Yeah, exactly. Oh. We have this argument every year. Uh. <laughs> about it so that would be the idea just you know yeah try to think about Board some goals. of the things that either we've wanted to do or some things that we know that we need to do um and, and let's put together a few goals that good, are attainable yeah. and that way we can measure ourselves against that and hold ourselves accountable i guess yeah that's a good and idea then we can have our town manager aid us in some of our that's how it sounds bad that's right so we'll do that in the next one <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and then we'll i'm sure we'll have a bunch of more annual uh reappointments yeah, not bad. Um, we're waiting on like the tree warden and finding another fence viewer and you know some stuff like that so i, I don't is there anything further that we have to do with the listers and things now that's that's on well right now all good to go or <laughs> <laughs> funny no i am i need to draft an rfp to find um an assessor and then i we need to put out an ad i'm going to talk to pam tomorrow it's on my list of things to do uh to talk to her about do we want to advertise for a combination someone to work in the lister's office as well as be an assistant town clerk because it would work really well for that person if they were going to do her land recordings to also work in the yeah, office. Kind of goes hand and, hand. and the person in the lister's office won't be doing anything for, for valuation of property. They'll just be entering the PTTRs, change of address, yeah, stuff like that. Excuse me? Yes, exactly. I mean, they'll have to know some stuff, but I'm also hoping to you know, hope it'd be nice if we could get a lister from another town that would be willing to come over because they'd be all trained on Nemric, they'd be trained on Kama, they'd be trained on VT Pi. So that would be Are like- a full-time position so you could offer benefits too? No. No. No, the, the Lister's position the, in the office, I can't, I only did maybe 18 hours a week. And so, no, so we wouldn't be anywhere well, near 30. An and I don't, that would be an don't spread that rumor. I don't have <laughs> the money for that. <laughs> Unless they also want to mow the lawns, <laughs> yeah, like that. Then, we, then they could be the parks position <laughs> and we'll give them benefits. Yeah. 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 yeah it's a slow day. Go mow the lawn. In the town yeah. hall. Yeah, exactly. So don't, yeah, Paul, no, don't spread that rumor. And uh, so, you know, but that's the thought. So I have to talk to Pam a little bit. So an RFP for the assessor, then a job description for that. I'm also need to revisit the job description that we had for the utility person last one to hold that position was Richard and make some tweaks to that and then we'll be able to get that out because despite the fact that that budget starts in July you know what I'm not gonna be able to wait till July to mow the lawn so I may have to bring somebody in you know sooner than that to um mm -hmm. that'll to, afford you to start lawn. in that position <laughs> so we'll go. see what we get for applicants so right now it's it's a matter of creating job descriptions and writing an RFP and, um, you know I expect that we'll see Nemric that they will apply for the assessor position considering they're doing our townwide reappraisal and they do that for a lot of small towns I already know their rate hence what I base my budget on so that you know we were in the in the money but yeah so you know it's on the list townwide people are still working Yes, they are. Yep. Yep. Al Coonrod was in the other day and uh, Rick Benson, I think last, or the week before town meeting had sent out another um, round of, you know, we mail the cards or he mails the cards about a week or so, or a few days before they're going to 
you know, show up on. So do they do like in, um, they go tackle a certain side of the town first? Cause I yeah. haven't seen anything. Yeah, in my they in my house. Have you seen anything? Yeah, in yeah. February. My I haven't yeah. seen anything. They go street by street. <clears throat> okay. And yeah. they've done, the 7th of February. they've done Camp Brook and oh. up there, they've been to River Street. They've been to Sand Hill. Oh, they've gotcha. been, um, yeah. So he did, he took the town and then we've just been doing it in streets and he did it in sections. So very methodical, but as we know, it's a two year rolling reappraisal. So won't yep. really do much for us until July of 2025. Okay. All right. So how, yeah. Hmm? So how does that work if you have a new construction? <laughs> Always thinking, aren't you, Dave? Oh, well, no, construction. No. That's not dead. <laughs> not dead, Dave. Then <laughs> hidden in the woods, they won't find it. No, the yeah. but the how do they appraise something that you can't take the value until till April first. No, 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 no. <laughs> nay, nay. We have your zoning permit. So Rick Benson Under, will understood, but it, it still has a, a value on today. Right. And the value April first may be different. Right. Exactly. So what'll happen is Rick Benson will come out. So Rick Benson will come out and appraise you, or or I say Rick Benson, someone. Uh, actually, it will be him because he'll still be here the day before. So he'll come out, we appraise you for now, as a, because we have to do this for the state, it has to be the value of what's on the property as of April 1st. Then what we'll do is we'll put you in as a percent complete. And so then we will revisit you again next year, either the list or. Mm -hmm. Right. But you've got, a, you've, got a, you've got a year. You have a year. That yeah. you could do something more. Abs Absolutely. Yeah. If you tore your house down, um, you know, on March, end of March, then you're right. If there's nothing standing on the property and you rebuilt the Taj Mahal on May 1st, you were right. You'd go a year without, without, you know, tax payment. And then we'd gouge you. And it, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just teasing. <laughs> just half construction. I don't Air know what you're building. Put anything back up. I don't always, know what always, you're building, but we'll keep trying. Anything you've been wanting to do, just uh, take it down. Yeah. So, no, so you're right. So you're right. right. That's kind of the way. Yeah. For Dave Eddy, it's retroactive. No, no, I'm just teasing. So, um, good luck. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So it's we'll appraise um, you the day after we grade up. That yeah, that's right. Perfect. Well, yeah, appraise right now. <laughs> no, no, we got a grade first. She's got a big four wheel drive truck. It's not getting near my property. That's right. The grader should be back this week. So, the grader will be um, right in front of the assessor. That's right. <laughs> uh, it's a beautiful road all the way to his house. Wow, yeah. you got such a nice road up here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That must increase his value by several thousand so yeah so that you're right that's the way it works so um but yeah we have some minor zoning permits out decks this that and the other thing that that uh rick benson will catch up mm -hmm. um but and hopefully obviously rick benson wants to to leave he's been doing us a favor but so hopefully we'll get that position filled fairly quickly all right yep. any Fingers other crossed. business to come before the board kind of an easy one tonight oh my God. yeah Dave's favorite. Dave's gonna get home before eight. I know. All right. No, no, no way to break in a new guy. Denise just moved to adjourn. Okay, move to adjourn. Have a second. Seven. All right. Seven. We're all set. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Seven. Thank you.